Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is the segment of the show where we pick a topic over a cup of coffee that will help you as a collector, user, maker, or even professional knife maker enjoy, make, or sell the high quality custom blade. Today's topic are three beginner mistakes that I've seen a lot and personally have had to work through in earlier on in my knife making experience. Now this is not to be taken as a criticism, it's to help you get over these humps quicker than I did as you're learning to make knives. We're all learning, there's things today that I look at as a mistake or something that needs to be fixed five years ago I didn't even notice. That's the nature of this and that's the spirit that it ought to be taken in. So to help you progress further, quicker in your knife making career, I've got three specific items that I wanna to talk to you about today. The first one is design. And if this chair doesn't stop creaking and making noises, it will certainly distract me. So we'll try not to do that. First one is design. Something that I've seen a lot of are sort of grandiose ideas for the perfect knife, you know, zombie killing, uh, you know, fantasy war game type whatever blade or maybe some awesome uh, survival slash, you know, uh, force recon type blade. And as a professional knife maker, I've, e I've even had multiple people ask me to make these types of blades. They're fairly easy to spot because they look kind of goofy. They look different than, than sort of your mainstream knife or your, your typical knife. Now, I applaud the creativeness and I understand the desire to uh, to, to be creative and you know solve problems that could exist in the uh, knife design world and make something that's gonna work better or work for all kinds of different things and be sort of the solution to these different problems that you might perceive when it comes to a blade or a knife for different functions. That's kind of where this is coming from. But the problem is these designs typically don't do anything well because they're designed either they're either designed to do all kinds of different things or they're designed to look really cool but they don't really function well i think the the, the, the way that i would say this and the advice that i would give to myself would be stick with the traditional blades that have been in use for hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of years knives are a part of human history and aside from maybe a club, it's the oldest tool known to mankind. And even today, if, if you're going to make anything, whether it's food, clothing, manufacturing, all kinds of appliances or anything, there is some kind of edged tool involved almost every single time. And so knives are just, a mar just as much a part of our life today as they have been since the beginning of history and which is one thing that's really fun about making knives like we're still humans we're still eating food and unless you're out there chewing on some cauliflower and a carrot well even that needs to be cut up if you're going to make a stew so you know having a nice tool that does that well that connects you with somebody else uh that's you can help and and, and improve their life that's that's one thing i really enjoy about the whole bladesmithing knife making thing but now I'm getting off on a different topic. My point is, people have been using knives for thousands of years. And I, I kind of had to learn this. Um, I don't think I ever got really too crazy with my knife designs because my, my bladesmithing knife making uh, journey started out of using blades, specifically in the wilderness survival context. And so I already had sort of a decent background or foundation on what a good using knife looks like and, and works like. And so I think that can be really helpful, whether that's in, in, in the chef or kitchen food prep world or hunting, you know, uh, field dressing, whatever the case is, people that have uh, sort of a background using knives tend to have a better understanding of how to design blades going forward, which obviously makes sense. And so as a beginner knife maker, I would just encourage you not to not design your own blades, but you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants, as it were. And look at knives that have been in use for, you know, hundreds if not thousands of years, and come up with your own version of it. Really, I would just say, don't try to reinvent the wheel, because that's not really what we're doing here. Blades are not a new thing, but the way you make a particular design of blade, or if you design your own blade from scratch, if it's gonna be usable, practical, and relevant, 
it is going to have a lot of the same characteristics of many other blades out there and that doesn't detract from your individuality as a maker so don't feel like that it does and so where we run into problems is with sort of the just really wild fantasy type shapes and designs and stuff like that and if what you're doing is building an art knife then I get it that's a, that's a whole different arena that's not something that I do I've built maybe I think two art knives that weren't really designed well one that I can remember for sure that weren't, wasn't designed to be used as a blade and that's just not really my thing if it's your thing that's fine but when it comes to making knives for people to use stick with tried and true designs and you can look at different knife making traditions that go back hundreds and hundreds of years the Japanese knife making tradition for example there's different European traditions that you know I, I think of just uh, for example, you know, the gaucho knife down in South America, which is influenced by Spanish knives, you know, centuries and centuries earlier, which is also what influenced the Bowie knife in, in the Texas uh, territory and different things like that. But all these different blades come from specific cultures and uses, and they were designed to be used for specific purposes. And so people, you know, and so you think about it, like, like the gaucho down in South America, you know where that blade design originally came from it, it's it's kind of looks like a kitchen knife actually it's a very practical fairly basic design but it works and that's the whole point now my chair is sinking down got some technical issues here the whole point is that a knife design that's been in use for a long time is been in use for a long time for a reason and so to reiterate I don't want to reinvent the wheel I want to look at existing knife designs and realize that they exist for a reason and then build from that, build on that. Tweak it a little bit, make it your own, but don't go so far as to try to reinvent the wheel and make something that in the end isn't going to actually work very well for its uh, intended purpose. The second thing that I see a lot of just in the practical building of the knife is edge geometry and thickness, problems with edge geometry and thickness. And specifically what I've seen and what I've personally experienced is it seems to be uh, normal early on for knife makers to leave their grinds and their edges much thicker than they need to or should. I think this comes from sort of a hesitation or reticence, maybe just even being a little bit scared about how that steel is going to perform under use and being afraid that maybe it's not going to hold up. And so leaving that edge, that blade, that grind thicker, all three of those, is sort of the remedy to making sure that that blade doesn't break or the edge doesn't chip or whatever. This is understandable, but the problem with it is that you end up with a knife that doesn't work very well. So a knife is designed to cut and by simple definition, it has to be thin not only at the edge, but also behind the edge and then further up into the blade, particularly if you're cutting through things, you need that clearance to actually get through it without a lot of resistance. And so as a new knife maker, you're probably going to feel hesitance about making that blade thinner. But here's what I would recommend. Go as thin as you dare and then go a little bit thinner, but then take that blade, take that knife, go out and test it for its intended purpose, okay? Don't take a little EDC knife out like this, or you know, heaven forbid, a, a kitchen knife, a chef's knife, and go try to cut through nails with it, or like even chop on a piece of wood. That's ridiculous, and, and that's a whole other thing we could talk about. That's not what it's for. It's not going to hold up to that. What it's for, in the case of like a chef's knife, is, is slicing through food efficiently, cleanly, and, and quickly. And if it does that well and holds a good edge through that uh, use on a, a proper cutting board surface, not the kitchen counter and not a ceramic plate, then you're getting towards making a good knife. You take that knife out and try to chop on a piece of wood with it just to prove how good the steel is, that's just nonsense. That's not, that has no bearing in the real world of actually using and making knives. That's a whole nother subject in itself that we could get into, but just for today, keep in mind that you might be making your blades, your edges, too thick for the design purpose. So pay attention to that. The third and final thing that I want to bring up today that I've personally done, as I mentioned earlier with all of these, and I've seen a lot with other new knife makers, is the handle. And very specifically, it seems natural when starting out as you're making particularly full tang bladed knives like this one, where you have a couple of handle scales 
They go on either side of the tang and they're attached with a rivet or a bolt or a pin. I've seen a lot of this. The tendency to leave that grip or that cross section very square, okay? So, and, and, and that's part of the process, you know, when you're building these, you're going to grind around the outside of the uh, tang here and clean that up so it's nice and flush and there's no gaps. But it seems like the tendency is to kind of just round those corners off after you do that and, and kind of leave it there. The problem with this is a couple of things. First of all, it doesn't look very finished. Secondly, it doesn't provide the best grip possible. Anytime you have sort of angular design to a grip, it's gonna it's gonna minimize the comfort and uh, even the er just the ergonomics of that grip. It can create hot spots when using it because it's digging into your hand. My general rule with uh, handles is to give it a nice oval cross section. At the very least, a very rounded on the corners. And so, depending on the thickness of your handle scale material, you can do that. If you have a really thin handle scale, handle scale material, it's gonna be very difficult to get a really nice oval cross section because you're gonna end up with a very thin handle. And that's, that's something to consider. So in this case, uh, this is a little more than a quarter inch thick. This is a natural handle material and it's already got some contour to it, but you can see how rounded off that is. So there's only a little bit of bark here in the middle. And if I left that, if I left more bark on there, we'd have a handle that was too square not comfortable and just sort of unfinished. And so my uh, encouragement to you in that regard is to look at the cross. First of all, you need to pick a handle scale material for your full tang knife that's thick enough that you actually have that leeway to take off more material on the corners and get that nice oval cross section. And of course, within there you have different contours, like not so much on this on this particular handle, but on, on a bigger knife, you'll have contours in here on each side, and that's gonna add more ergonomics to the overall blade. But again, you have to start with thick enough handle material that you actually have the leeway to do that. So, not much to say about this. Just round those corners off. Give yourself that oval cross section. Most of the time, that's a very good, ergonomic, comfortable, secure grip on your full tang blades. So pay attention to that. Don't leave those corners, even if you've just rounded them off a little bit, don't leave them, don't leave them sitting there. So. That's what I have for you guys today. Hopefully this helped you as a collector, maker, or even professional knife maker. Appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you on the next video.